So friends, you have learned how to sell yourself. Now let's talk about asking questions, the rule three. In rule three, you are asking questions. There are certain rules, what kind of questions you should ask, what should be your interest and how should you communicate. So let me detail it out in this form. Here, very sensitive thing. You have to ask questions to know about his needs. You remember just now I said that when somebody is in trouble, you'll be asking about questions. What is, what is his problem with this machine that he has? What he wants further to this? So show interest in the client's business as well. That means when you're talking about the machines, you also know what is the kind of business that he is doing where you can be helpful as a salesperson, okay? And so show interest in the client's business and also appreciate client's success. I'll tell you, be sympathetic if there's a, there had been a failure in the clients and also be appreciative whenever a client has a success. If you find that the client's name has come in the newspaper, so next time when you're meeting, you just immediately congratulate him so that he knows that you have noted his success. So client's success is important. When you're showing interest in the business, basically try to find out where is the possibility of your product to be sold to him. That's the idea. And when you're appreciating the client, at that time you don't think about it. You appreciate the client as a person, as a business person, as a customer, who you are happy because the customer is happy. He has got a success. Identify interests and targets. You identify what is the client's targets, what he wants to do in future. Accordingly, you can realign your production system. You can realign your products. See, the whole set of computer items which are spread all over the world now has come from the customers itself. The manufacturers or the developers, they might have thought about some alternatives of solving some problems. What is that solving some problems in computer? Dealing with a large data and doing it almost mechanically with some mechanical machines or manually by adding, subtracting and all that and dealing with large data which taking so much of time. So what was the factor for computer innovations is this, how can big, big calculations or data can be processed in the shortest possible time? That means the time to be reduced to as negligible as possible and the amount of outputs to be as large as possible. That brought the whole computer into our system, isn't it? Now who said that there's a problem? It's a customer who only said there's a problem. And when the customer said that I have a problem, I have to deal with so much of data, then the naturally the DBM as the database management system got developed by the developers. DBMS person, database management developers, uh, system developers, they found out that so much of data to be handled and there are so much of, you know, you know, I would say the labyrinths created. So they tried to, you know, optimize the whole system. They created a flow chart and then the workout, the whole system which is going to solve all the problems. That means the customer has expressed. So if you could identify the interest and the targets of the customer, then you can also realign the production of your future products. That's what. So that is possible only by asking questions. So, you know, it's something like show interest in the client's business. If I'm saying you ask, ask questions that what kind of business do you really have? Do you have only this business or you also have other businesses? And then if you're appreciating, you say that I saw that in the newspaper that you have got an award. Could you please tell me that for, you know, what was that for which you have got the award? And as soon as he says it, you appreciate it. Okay. And for identifying interest and targets, you ask. What kind of problems are you facing? How can I solve your problem? Would you give me an opportunity to solve your problem? That's how we do it. Now, identifying interest and targets also varies from different persons in the same organization maybe, or maybe different customer type. I'll just give you a certain clue here. That if suppose you are meeting a managing director, then you talk about, or you try to know about the company profits. Because that is one thing the manage, manage, uh, MD is going to boast about. And if, you, if suppose somebody says that this year we got made about say 15% profit or sometimes they say 30% profit or sometimes 100% profit, you know, that means don't talk about profits with other members of that company. It's MD who is responsible for bringing in profits and also take the credit of the profits. So you ask questions, you show your interest to the managing directors in terms of profits. And in case there had been loss, then in such cases you should also really you know, 
I, I won't say that you could, uh, you say that I'm very sorry that you made a loss or something like that. You don't have to do that. You be a little compassionate and you can always say that, okay, today's loss, tomorrow it will be profit. Okay. That means it gives a little bit of comfort in the mind of the MDs that he has suddenly, you know, in view of, in course of discussion said, okay, we have made so much of loss this time. You can always say that, okay, it's loss is a part of the business, sir. But I think the next time definitely you will have a profit. Okay. But you don't sympathize. I'll tell you, never sympathize because you are not the authority to sympathize an MD in terms of their loss. You are only a small component in the whole production system where you are supplying a product. Never, never sympathize. Then sales director. If there's a sales director you're dealing with, then you talk about the targets. Sales target. How much is the sales target this year? How much you have met? And what is the, you know, if suppose they have made up good target then you immediately appreciate and if they made a little lesser target you can always say that okay always there's a better times if it's a personal manager personal manager means who are dealing with staffs and human resources then you talk about the staff's quality you don't talk about the profit don't they even talk about the sales target you talk about the staff's quality and in case you can help as a salesperson providing some system or product which can help this personal manager. An example is like a personal manager is likely to have a good you know, software which can hold the entire data properly and he can allocate resources and all at, at the, you know, at one press of a button he can see the time allocated to different personnel. If you have such software, immediately that is a person who is going to first be interested in your product and he will try to know more. And if he does not know, you introduce this product to him and don't try to push for selling. You say, look, we have a product which can solve your this kind of problems. In case you are interested, maybe there's some time, you just give us a time, we'll come and explain to you this is the thing. Okay? And if you find it is useful, then you may think of buying it. Never say, please buy it. Never. Okay. Then comes the production manager. Production manager, if you are talking to, then talk about the outputs. Output in terms of quantity, output in terms of quality. Okay, and if there is a homemaker, now you have gone to a house to sell a product. You are a salesperson. You have met the house lady, who is a homemaker. Then you talk about the household matters. You don't talk about the you know. If suppose you have gone to the house of the MD and then you are meeting the homemaker, the wife of the MD. Don't even ask what is the company's profit your husband has got. Never make a mess of it. You only focus on individual and their interest and their targets. If it's a homemaker, then you try to find out whether there is any household items which the one should be requiring, or is there any household item which is giving trouble? Is there any household item which needs replacement or servicing? If it requires servicing, then don't sell your product first. If you, if suppose the lady says that I have a machine, okay, I have a mixer juicer which is not working properly, so I don't, I'm not planning to buy another from you because you are producing that, but I have one which is not, you know, working properly. I'll see that what I can do later. Immediately jump on to giving service. Don't sell your product. You say, okay, can I have a look at it? Can I see whether it can work? Basically what you're trying is you're trying to win the heart of the lady. You're trying to win the heart of the lady in this way that you're not pushing your own product. You are only trying to help that so that she does not need to buy another product of the same kind, only a little bit of service is required. That means your product would have cost about say 5,000 rupees, but the servicing would cost about say 50 rupees. A replacement cost may call for another say 200 rupees and you are you can say that okay this particular product I can I think I can service for you you have to only bear the cost of 250 rupees you don't have to buy another 5000 rupees worth which I am selling simply say that that means you have won the heart of the lady the next time she is thinking of replacing this she'll give you a call and say can you now come with a product literature of your or say a sample of your product so that I can think of replacing this particular old one with the new one which you are selling. So you are selling yourself, you are selling, you know, to people, okay? So next is the professional buyer. Here, it's a very, very critical thing. Professional buyers are the persons in a company or even individually who are buying stuffs, okay? Who are always buying something and they are professional means they know exactly the mechanism by which they should buy. They know it very, very well. If you know you are a master of your selling, then he is a master of his buying, okay? The professional buyer. If you are now trying to, you know, identify interest in the targets as a professional buyer, then always try to find out the value that he is trying to add or the delivery time within which this has to be done. 
So value and delivery time is more critical to the professional buyer. Not, it may be for others as well, but the thing is professional buyer will think about what is the value of this and what is the delivery time within which I can get it. Quite often I have seen that I have even called you know, salesperson saying that can you give me this product within three days? If yes, I'm going to buy. But if you give after three days, I don't need to buy. I have done it myself as a buyer. At the same time, you know, I've seen seller who came to me and said, sir, this particular uh, product is available today. And if suppose you buy this by three days, then in such cases, you get a discount of so much. What he has done, he is trying to find out the delivery time vis-a-vis -vis the value. That means he's giving a discount, means saving my money. That is how the whole thing is going to go for. And explore needs and problems. Exploring needs and problems is always a part of your sales first move. You ask whether you have. You must have seen in your doorstep, quite often some marketing person, they come. They ask you, that, do you have you know, vacuum cleaner in your house? He will not say, he's, uh, he knows uh, that he has a vacuum cleaner in his mind to sell. But he has come here, he will say, I haven't come to sell you anything. I've just come to know that, do you have a vacuum cleaner in your house? If you say yes, then the next question is, which company? He will write down. And then the next question is, how old is it? So what he's trying to see? you have a vacuum cleaner and it is five years old and of that company and now he will not do any sales he'll simply do the market research and go but basically he's a component of the sales team he'll go back and give this feedback and the salesperson will come to you after one month and he'll say would you like to buy one from us this is my product so exploring the needs and the problems is very important okay so you are asking questions and asking questions with dignity, with full respect, with full, you know, I would say, without any malapropism, these are very, very important. Without showing that you are inquisitive or don't be, not being inquisitive, these are all good items of marketing. Now, the situation is that, okay, I am asking you to ask questions. That's rule three. Should you be asking questions only? No, there is a rule four. The rule four is, it talks about listen attentively. That means here, the point is, you are selling your, pro your product, you want to inform the customer about your product. But at the same time, you remember that the customer will have, you know, whole of questions, n number of questions that the customer will ask you, and you got to respond. In this, the rule four becomes very effective. It's very, you know, sardonically said that God has given us two ears but one mouth. Take it in that proportion. As a salesperson, you should speak one third of the entire conversation. And the two third you should listen. That means whatever you are saying, give at least double of that quantity of time or opportunity to the customer to ask you questions or s express the problems or the needs and you listen to it very attentively. So the first thing I'll tell you rule four is listen very, very attentively and then speak as little as possible. See, the thing is you cannot be dumb. You cannot be, you know, you cannot just use no words to express what you have as a product. So listen very carefully. Ramu, after back for more. Ramu, you can't get it away. See, the thing is, listen to what is said. Very important. The client is going to express his needs, his problems, and you are the problem solver by providing a solution through marketing your products. So you listen to what is said, but also it is said that you listen to what is not said. Listen to what is not said is very, very tricky thing. That means it's between the lines. You know, sometimes we say, read between the lines. Between the lines, there's blank, there's nothing. But what you are going to read between the lines? It is the kind of terminology used or the sentence used, you know, just to give an idea that there is something in between the lines which are not written, but you have to read. That means your mind has to play. Similar here, you are definitely listening what is being said but also listen to what is not being said. That means, now, suppose you are trying to sell a product and somebody is expressing something. That means you are listening to the person, the product you are, he is looking for, but he has another problem which you could notice. 
And then he did not say, he did not ask for any clarification on that or neither ask for any information from you. But you looked at his office and you found that that particular item which also you have in your product list is not on his table. It's not said, but you have listened to his need with your eyes. This is very, very interesting thing. You know, it's, it's a kind of idea. It's, it's a philosophy of listening to what is not said. And sometimes listening to what not said gives rich dividends. Okay, then comes notice customers buying signals. See, buying signals are two types. One is simply not buying, another is buying. And there is also in between maybe buying sometime in future, but you try to notice the customer's buying signals. If you find that the buying signal is such that it is negative, he is not interested to buy, he doesn't require it, you enter a person's office and then you find he has 10 computers. Suddenly you cannot jump into selling him 10 more computers. First you have to find out and uh, whether these computers are recent purchase or the old purchase are obsolete. And then you try to find out are they still working? And then you try to find out are they thinking of replacing it? And then you push your own new computers which you have. Okay, that means within this itself you can get your buying signals. Suppose you talk about these computers, I see these products you have. And the customer says, yes, I have purchased it three years back. You can start thinking three years is obsolete time. Then you start talking about your business. But suppose the customer says, I bought it three months time. Your buy buying signal is, he is not going to buy. Don't waste your time. Just leave. Leave with a courtesy. Leave with a parting note. Very pleasant parting notes. You know, what kind of thing you should say? If suppose the customer says that I bought it just three months back. Then you ask, what is the configuration? And he will talk about the configuration. If you have a better configuration, you can always say, fine, fine, it's just three months old, so you don't have to really replace it right now. Though we have a product which is a better configuration than them, than these, but the thing is, okay, you have bought it just three months old. Let it uh, run its own life. Okay, maybe two, uh, two years or one year after, if you are thinking about replacing it, please call us. That means you made a prospect for future. But you did not push for selling your product right now because the buying signal is negative. At the same time, suppose somebody has a say five years old computer lying and it's a dusty and not working properly. And he is, exp he is saying, I am not in a position to buy because I don't have fund. So buying signal is negative. But he is also expressing that, okay, this particular products are not giving me good service. It's pretty slow, the configuration is old and it's not giving good service. And some, this printer is also there, but I cannot buy another printer, but this is not working. The buying signal is positive. That means he is saying, he is talking all negative about these products which he owns now. But the signal is that he wants, he is thinking in case he had money, then he could have bought it. In such cases, I'll tell you, I can give you a clue. Suppose somebody says, I have a printer which is, uh, you know, uh, old, not really giving good service and quite often I have to get it reserviced and all that. It's not working well, but unfortunately I cannot buy now. I cannot. Uh, then you ask, do you need a uh, better printer than that? He may say, yes, I do, but I don't have the fund. Buying signal is negative and positive together. You know what? The negative is he doesn't have a fund, and the positive is he's, he's very much keen to buy one uh, shortly. Immediate reaction of yours is, okay, when do you want it? He says, yesterday. Yesterday is a very common term used for most urgent need. He will say, yesterday. Then you say, okay, you have it. Tomorrow the, there'll be a new printer. Ne immediately he will become defensive and say, no, 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 I cannot pay it now. So you say, don't have to pay now. You pay whenever you can. Then he feels a little comforted. He becomes comfortable and then he says, okay, in that case, uh, how early do you require the payment back? If you say, give me whenever you are comfortable, but not more than three months. Within three months, can you pay? He may find it, okay, three months I can pay. I'll get the fund from somewhere. But you can also g get another options saying that, can you pay me in installments? It may be still a little discomfort, but still comfortable. Uh, and the customer may say, yes, yes, okay, three installments I can, buy, I can pay. Then tomorrow you are getting it. And next day you bring your machine, replace the other one, give a new machine. Basically, that's a signal. So signal is one, a negative and another positive. You have converted this to positive and you are going to take care of the pricing and everything in terms of your installments so that you don't lose but you already sold a product. So tomorrow the product will be delivered. This is how the customer's buying signal is important. Then comes the price, delivery dates, color, style. These are also buying signals. Okay, the price I set, he cannot pay. Suppose he says that, no, 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 this product is very costly. I don't require this. 
then you ask him what's your budget he will say this is my budget then you find out from your product list which is the best possible thing that you give best possible configuration that you can give in the machines you know with respect to the budgetary limits and then you say okay the price it is price sensitive in such cases you can buy this one which is 10000 cheaper and he thinks 10000 cheaper is about 10% saving and he says okay fine i can go for it so the price buying signals the delivery date buying signals the urgency in color when you're showing the product literature somebody may say that no 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 this color is i don't like you know it's black i don't like black i require white it's a buying signal if you provide him with a white machine of that immediately there's a likeliness that he'll buy okay also the style i don't like a look of this particular machine you ask him what kind of look that you prefer you know search from your own catalogs if he finds this this particular item look wise is better then immediately you sell it okay so you listen attentively give him more chance to say and more the customer says i'll tell you more the customer is allowed to say more likely that he's going to buy you test it yourself and more you say as a salesperson and give less chance to the customer then you will find the customer is least likely to buy because he would think he or she would think that you are being pushy you are trying to forcefully say more 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 and all so that the, you are trying to impress the client actually the customer should be given twice the chance of your speaking listen to clients problems and worries i have already highlighted this if you understand the clients problems and worries whenever client is saying i have a clue for you whenever client is telling about his expressing his problems and worries you know don't talk just become mum pay full attention with your eye contacts to the customer and listen to the entire problems and worries and try to keep a note either a mental note or a sh short notebook note okay these are the worries these are the problems customer is facing give him more chance to express more worries more worries and more problems if the customer is telling you more of a problems more worries then in such cases you can always come up with a host of solutions providing you know so give him a chance to say if suppose customer says you know i have a problem with this printer don't jump into it don't worry i'll give you another printer never say that allow him to say what is the problem where did you buy it from how much is the price is the servicing being given uh, regularly is it under amc what is the cost of running uh, operating cost of that who is operating it give him a chance to say everything he keeps on saying 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 all his worries and problems and then once he says this is what then you say okay i understand these are your problems if i give you a solution that i'll give you a machine which is better than that which will be automatically three years warranty instead of one year you don't have to go for two more extra year of amc you start giving your all inputs okay that's how you sell so be a problem solver and you can only solve the problem if you have listened to the problems that is the crux of it listen to the problems if i said listen to clients problems then be a problem solver but how do you solve the problem unless you have heard about the problems give him a chance to speak and then don't sell a product you sell a solution this is one of the very important things said don't sell the product product will be automatically sold but what you can sell is a solution and the clients have the problems and the clients have the worries and they require solutions there can be five types of products similar nature you know a little plus minus in terms of cost but the thing is client requires a solution not the product he ultimately he will get the product which will solve his problem but when you are selling you don't sell your product you sell the solution so when you are highlighting your product always give an idea that what is your products you know good points okay so i'll discuss the next in the next lectures